Welcome back, everyone. This is MDog, and I uh, thought I would just do a little chill fishing here at the 34 meter hole at uh, in the Norwegian Sea. If you uh, follow my channel or pay attention to my channel a little bit, you'll know that I've not been doing a lot, uh, either here on YouTube or on Twitch. And I just wanted to kind of give people an update. I, you know, I've done this in the past where I've gotten really busy with real life stuff, particularly work. And um, <laughs> I feel like I just kind of go dark for a month or two and then things finally slow down enough. And, um, you know, all of a sudden I'm back. And of course everybody is super kind and excited when I'm back and uh, viewers tend to come back, which, you know, again, like that's just really cool that, uh, I'm able to do that and not take a huge hit on viewership or feeling like I, um, don't have the opportunity to come back and enjoy being a part of the community. So I always appreciate that, but I was trying to like, as I'm realizing that that's what's happening right now, that I'm basically in the, in the midst of going dark. I was uh, I was kind of wanting to provide some feedback on that. I'll just kind of give everybody a heads up and update. Uh, it's not that I don't want to fish or play the game or hang out with you all, especially the the part about hanging out with the community and just kind of being a part of things. That's the part that uh, is obviously most appealing, but it really is just um, a season of life that is really busy. Uh, a lot of it has to do with work. Um, but it, you know, it's other stuff as well. And realistically, I just, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in a, a period of time where, and I, you know, I hesitate to put a time frame on it, but like, if I had to guess, I would say this whole academic year is just going to be more intense than usual for me. So, you know, starting around Thanksgiving and certainly over the Christmas break, I might suddenly have a lot more time, um, which would be nice. And again, whether it's videos here on YouTube or, you know, streaming on Twitch, perhaps I will, um, you know, be around more and, you know, hopefully a lot of you all are still around at that point as well. Uh, playing the game or interested in the game and um, and then I would say in the spring I will also be busy although not as busy as I am right now this fall semester for a variety of reasons is just uh, is just busier and that's just the way it is so I won't ramble and ramble about all of it you, you know everyone's busy everyone's got um, things, responsibilities, things that they do that some seasons are just busier than others, right? So that being said, I still do occasionally play Russian Fishing 4. I still do occasionally play other games as well. Um, I, as you may know, if you were there this past month, was able to do the sort of partner with Russian Fishing 4 and hold the competition on a Saturday where RF4 donated some really nice prizes for the top three in that competition and actually may be able to do that again, uh, either later in September or, or sometime relatively soon. We're talking about another Saturday where that might work. So um, again, I'm not necessarily going to be entirely gone, but if you've been around for a while, you know that when I have time, I tend to stream at least two or three times a week, I tend to make YouTube videos on a regular basis. And I just couldn't be further from that reality right now. So anyway, I will stop going on and on about that. Um, and uh, let's just see how this fishing goes. Let me, let me respond to my dad real quick. I love it when like in the in the ocean it's just like the current just moves your your bait around your your lure around whatever 
and you catch stuff whether you are whether you're actively trying to or not That's a nice safe for uh, bait. Nice bait size safe right there. Let's see if we can get that set up. I won't make it since it's taken so long to get everything set up, but maybe after this next fish I will. Wow. All right, so let's see what we're actually using to fish with here. Um, so far, what have we caught? What I expect to catch, uh, are some of the small fish, especially like the Atlantic Sori. <clears throat> and we have had a couple of those or maybe one of those in a sardine, but they were undersized. So I didn't keep them. What we've actually caught <clears throat> is a safe whiting and a pollock, which that's also fine. It's one thing I enjoy about, oh yeah, and the whiting, it's interesting, we'll have to keep an eye on that. One thing I enjoy about the Norwegian Sea, though, in times like this where I don't have as much opportunity to play, is that I can feel more disconnected from the game, like not getting time day, day after day in there, in the game and still log in maybe once a week or whatever come out to 34 meter hole or something else i mean you know you can look on discord or vk or whatever and just make sure like what seems to be a good place to fish right now but i basically know you know what to do to come very quickly get on some fish make some silver, get a little uh, XP, feel like I'm still progressing even during that uh, short time that I'm getting in the game. So that's kind of a cool part of Norwegian Sea. I, I mean, I think even like the silver you make, times when you're not able to put as much time into the game when you do get into play, if you're in the Norwegian Sea, you can still come make some pretty decent silver in a short amount of time. So there's the story. I think it's time of day is one of the main factors here it's not unusual for those early morning hours to be a little slower but i think in the afternoon we'll see more mackerel and uh probably more sorry popping up we'll see if that's actually true and again so far i have not been fishing at the bottom that's one thing to note here uh and i will actually this next cast i'll show you what we're actually fishing with but if I wanted to catch more, I don't know. Um, there's just some fish, as you know, that are gonna bite more often down at the bottom. A wider range of fish. But at least during the daytime here, I'm trying to tempt some of those larger, small fish. All right, so this is what we're fishing with. All blue stuff, Lurker 100. This is my favorite, you know, small setup, the Regal with the Poseidon Cincy. And then 3 0 hooks with three different shrimp. We're using the pink, white, and then the 7.5 orange. Um, and and I, I mean, you know, I just chose those because I saw that somebody had caught some nice trophy sori on them recently. So, I mean, that's it's as simple as that, right? There's a nice one. The, this is the fish. I mean, well, this is one of the fish. I would say this and the mackerel especially. It's like these small fish that you catch on these shrimp. You hit a lot of cafe orders, but even without the cafe, 
I mean, look at this experience. For the size, the amount of experience in silver you're getting. If you can get a really aggressive bite rate going, it's just fun and, uh, and rewarding. Now there's, obviously there's a little bit of a ceiling. It's just very consistent. But if you want to try to hit it big, then yeah, obviously probably fish off the bottom, maybe even try some different spots or whatever. But since Norway has come out, I feel like I have just, look at this fish after fish. I feel like I have just made a ton of silver at a very consistent rate. Um, targeting these smaller fish at times targeting safe or mackerel at times targeting sorry sometimes just finding like an all-around approach at some of these banks that have such a good bite rate but there's another really nice whiting over a hundred k really nice whiting but um yeah i mean I've spent a lot of silver since being here at Norway, but we have made even more. It's, it's just been really consistent and rewarding. Now, that's, you know, when this map first came out and for the first while that the map was out, I had a much freer schedule. So I got a lot of time logged in uh, and all that, but I think that's why I like it even now is that I can sort of casually come it's probably a safe, although it could be a poly. I can uh, casually come, just still get some progression in. Happy that that's a pollock. The more pollock we catch, the more whiting we catch, the more silver and XP we'll make and we'll earn. Ooh, we're drifting. We don't have to go like super far, but let's just get a little bit back on top of the the bank here. interesting how we just like occasionally get these random blue whitings i think that's the third one we've had so maybe it's not that random maybe they're just here
So we are stopping it at 20 meters or thereabouts and perking, even though some of these times it is taking a minute to get a bite. Arguably, it might be better just to keep it dropping and let it go to the bottom, but I don't know. Let's try that one time. Let's just see what happens, see what we end up catching. I mean, this easily feels like we're on pace for several hundred silver an hour, right? Even without cafe orders, at least three, 400 silver in an hour. Um, which that even doesn't seem like that much because of the Norwegian sea inflation effect. But the truth is that is a ton of silver if you go back to pre-Norway. And we're using very inexpensive gear right now. That's the other benefit. Okay, so we got like a really small haddock by letting it go to the bottom. Let's, uh, maybe this time we'll keep it up at 20. Maybe we'll rotate back and forth. I don't know. I think if I was going to go down to the bottom a lot, I would rather have something like um, uh, the, you know, handmade foam fish on there different colored foam fish or maybe try some find some other soft baits to have on the drop um, it seems to me that if you're going with the shrimp approach ultimately it's unless it's really get, gotten slow or something it's usually better to keep it up in the um, the upper levels and just kind of you know try to hit some of those really fat sorries or whatever else is present mackerel This is interesting. What will this be? A little sorry, maybe? Yep. You know, we released that because it's not a marker size, so it's not going to sell for much. Whatever. You could keep it and sell it and make a couple of silver off all your undersized fish. But if you notice these little these little small ones that aren't quite marker size, it's still like 2,000 XP. Again, the the equations, the the numbers have just changed. And obviously, if we if I was still playing daily, more aggressively, we had to hit level forty five by now because of the Norwegian Sea. Now we get into the afternoon. See if anything changes. Maybe the consistency of the marker size. One thing that I used to do pretty often, I didn't do it this time, is instead of those three aught hooks, sometimes I would go with four aught hooks. And it seemed like sometimes at least that would change how many like non markers I was catching. I mean, that's the thing. You just don't want to get stuck with too high a percentage of non markers. It slows you down too much. I don't know that I'll fish through the night. But when it gets a little closer tonight, I probably will switch it up a little bit. And, and at 
at least for a short amount of time, go for like Safe, Pollock, something a little bit more, um, a little larger. Okay, maybe green foam rubber fish. I don't know where those are being caught at though. Pollock is showing green as well. Also the Jigmeister 110, that could be a good combo. Um, yeah, green. I like that. Uh, I like that idea, I think. We might as well just go to the bottom this time. Jigmeister and green foam. That could be interesting. All right, see, we let it go to the bottom. We, you know, really fishing out of a different, a different uh, pool of fish down here. If we let it go to the bottom like that. All right, so let's look at let's look at our what is it on? It's probably this one, right? Yeah, let's change this to a pilker rig. Let's go to the 110 here. Uh, let's go 50 hook, which is kind of interesting. And we're going to go with blue, but just to get it like straight down to the bottom, still use small fillets. We have to go 3 if we're going to use foam rubber fish. Uh, we're going to do all green. I don't know if I have enough. Um, yeah, it looks like I might. You know, it'd be interesting, I think, to do this. But not on this one. All right. So we lost a fish there on the drop. How far? Okay, that's cool. Uh, so the fish actually took. <laughs> we had something on and it took our line for a bit. That's the uh, danger of setting up your line while you're still fishing. All right, so I'm excited to try that little setup up. Ooh, there's a nice little sorry there. I'm excited to try that little setup up again once it gets to be evening. We'll switch over to that for a bit before we wrap it up. I don't think, uh, at least with this setup, I don't think I like the bite rate. We're going for small fish. The bite rate right now, at least, could be weather, could be other factors. To me, it just feels a little too slow to justify choosing to like use the shrimp setup. Another little Pollock. I mean, ultimately, you know, 22 minutes, only 16 keepers. That's a little under average, right? For this kind of fishing. We're usually getting more like, at, you know, a fish and a half per minute, if not more sometimes. If we're fishing in the upper register like this and with shrimp,
kind of wish I would have noticed this earlier that bite rate's just not quite good enough. I mean, they're here. We're just not hooking into them quite fast enough, I think. a little better I feel like they're healthy I mean they're here they're just a little slower our biggest one was 319 and it was on 6.501 which I believe isn't that the white yeah Trying to do a little bit softer perk here. A little sardine. Safe or small pollock? Pollock. There's a fat sardine. You don't mind those either. All right, let's get a couple more fish in. Then I'm gonna take a quick bio break, which means I'm gonna go use the restroom, the loo, really fast. And then I'll come back. And uh, while I'm gone, y'all can just stare out at the water. Or you can fast forward the video. And then I'll come back and we're going to try to cast the other setup 
see if we can't get anything interesting off the bottom as we head into late night. All right, there's 1900. Let's go one fish past 1900 to see what happens. All of a sudden, it's kind of going good. Like we've been on a streak here. All markers that I can remember recently. Once again, okay, I'll be right back. Here we go. 
I did think about one thing I might want to change. I might want to fully embrace the like slower drop. See what that see what that does for us. All right, so we're on this with sixty. All right, go Tiger C go. It's kind of fun. We're getting to use both both of our favorite small um, reels. The Rigel. And now the Taiga Sea. Okay. Tell you what, let me uh, remind you what's on this rod next while the next cast is dropping. Because th this is going to take a little longer to drop than it would if we just had the simpler uh, attractants at the top. Ooh, look at the wolfish. That rattle pays off. All right, so this is what we've got. We've got the Jigmeister 110. So slightly heavier lure than what we were using but then we've got the rattle and the squid with the small uh, safe and then look at all of the uh, foam rubber fish uh the so foam rubber fish on the on the weeklies at least seem to be doing pretty well it even caught this wolf fish um so that's why i decided to just overload green on the bottom uh drop shots we'll just see how we do here for a little bit longer and then we will wrap up this um, where have you been M dog video that was a nice hit I don't know what this is but it hit it I love the way it hit it, it just popped it in the mouth I think it's just going to be, you know, one of the trifecta, Saith Pollock Haddock, uh, just like a mid-size. It just crushed it. Uh, some interesting pull going on here at the end. Oh, it's a cusk. Okay. I guess I got to be ready for that now that it's nighttime. I wasn't even thinking cusk. Uh, it should have clued me in the way it started pulling there at the end like a dead weight. Not dead weight, but heavy weight.
That's something we do want to avoid is COD. I mean, there's no avoiding it in, in, in a lot of circumstances. There's no avoiding it, but... At least on this rig with this setup. probably cod or one of the few fish that we're likely to see in this spot on this kind of bank that could be pretty annoying for this setup and we will we could eventually get most any cod in i would think on this but it could definitely take a long time so really nice bite rate on this on this setup this time of day We've just had fish after fish. We're not getting the lulls like we did earlier on the on this other setup. Now, we're fishing at a deeper spot, so it's a little longer time getting them out of the water. Heavier fish, too, so. There's another cusk. I don't know that I'll actually fish long enough to see this but kind of early uh, or, or later morning not later morning but i guess what i'm saying is like 3 4 a.m you might see like a really nice european place or something come in i mean we could we could see it anytime but i just feel like i can just feel it happening here a little later on Are you bummed out when you see this many cusk? I mean, I, I'm really not. I mean, I think like many of the fish in Norway, cusk, sneaky, valuable. They add up, you know. There's not a whole lot that bums me out in this kind of situation. It's like low investment. None, nothing that we're using costs that much silver equipment-wise. It's low commitment in terms of how long it takes to get something in unless something really runs on us like you know the bottom is only 35 meters down where i do start to like sometimes it can test my patience when i go to fish at really deep spots with setups that you would think are going to catch larger fish or whatever and then you bring up the like two kilo safe or whatever from 120 something meters down or whatever those moments a little bit harder for me but this kind of thing i'm all good is it just me or do i look a little red I feel like that's better. Might have you even should go a little more. Looks like the cusk front might still be 
moving in. We'll see. Most deaf. A little bigger one, though. A little bigger cusk. So far on this setup, we're really not catching anything on the drop. It's nighttime, so a lot of those smaller fish species are silent anyway, but I'm surprised that like the occasional Sath or Pollock aren't just like crushing it at 25 meters. Well, all right. Hey, hey. This is interesting, very small fish to be pulling off the bottom like this. Maybe this is a place. Uh, sculpin. Hadn't seen a sculpin today. That's interesting. Okay. Hey, right, let's get one more fish. We'll see what happens. One more fish and we'll wrap it up. We'll call it and we'll go turn some stuff in. 50 minutes. I mean, we didn't make an hour, but we still got a lot of, a lot of fish in. It's been interesting.
Checking on the old 34 meter bank. See what this strong perk catches. We're lifting it in and out. We're lifting it out of and then letting it drift back into the bottom layer, which it's hard not to do that if you're gonna get a strong perk going. But I do feel like we could probably have it a little lower if we wanted to where it would spend a little more time in the bottom layer. But I'm just kind of curious what we might catch here. Maybe we will, since we lost perking there, let's let this just drift a little farther down. Ooh, there we go. I mean, that's just kind of the way it works, right? If you, if you get it really down into that bottom layer, it feels like the bite rate does go up. Oh, brutal. Okay. I'll be right back. As best I can tell, and, I, and I'll be honest, I must have just missed when this change came into the game. I have noticed it the last few times I've played, so I feel like it's mostly been recently. But the best I can tell, it is now the case that if you log out and log back in, you have to repay to travel to whatever map you want to fish at. Boy, this makes me sad. Like, that makes me really sad. Let's see that safe. All right, 70 silver. Look at that whiting. Yeah, still a very, very good day fishing, even with the fact that we somehow didn't get that safe order done. Didn't even get close, by the way. Uh, so just keep making that silver. It, it is disappointing, though. That change is disappointing in my mind. Um, it's basically... Yeah, having to pay to repay to travel every time you log back in. I mean, if somebody gets disconnected, I, I don't know. That's a weird one. That is a monetary balance um, issue, right? And um, maybe there's a reason, a well thought out reason behind it. But it, it's one of those changes that just feels punishing i guess it just it's it's hard to think as a player like okay what is the benefit for me right now that is a really small i mean congrats canadian way like that's cool that it's always cool when you see your name on the on the crane fish but that is a small and a weird looking halibut because of its size uh anyway all right hey thanks for watching thanks for your patience um I hope to see you more often. I hope to stream again soon, but you know, all I have are hopes. <laughs> uh, Y'all are the best. Tight lines, everybody. I'll see you next time.